Uh, hi everyone, how's everyone? Good, good. Um, actually, in the, in the um, core values, it says solving the unsolvable for innovation. And um, my thinking was around, there's, was there a famous line in a film that says, oh, you only think it's impossible because no one's ever done it before. I can't remember what film it was, but it's a very famous line in a film. I think it was... Maybe it's Star Wars, I can't remember what it was, but you know, so our thinking creates the world that we find ourselves in, our world. You know, your personal experience of that world is a big reflection of who we're being, who we are. Um, we've made quite a point of who we're being is part, a very strong part of this, and you'd all have some view of that. Some of you will have a deeper understanding, maybe it's an evolving understanding. Um, but notice how much of that you already know that you know. Um, and I want to challenge you today, because if you only went back home tonight with everything you already knew, it wouldn't have been the value we, we had intended. So in the, in the context of collaborating, uh, Jill and I thought we'd turn our genius slot into one that really focused on expanding collaboration, or collaboration expanded. And what I was thinking about in terms of collaborations is this kind of popping effect, where there's a cascade of things just start to happen. Have you all had that experience in life, where it was like, you're pushing against something, you're trying to make something happen, or, or, or then suddenly things just start taking on a momentum. Have you all had that kind of experience, yeah. where things start to evolve in a way that maybe you had intended, or maybe you hadn't intended, but they just started to bloom, blossom? What other words would you use for that effect? I'm still, personally, I'm still waiting for that tipping point to happen, but I know it's going to happen. But you've had it in other areas of your life, right? Yeah. Yeah? yeah, that's what I mean. So, what, how would you describe that? Momentum. Yeah, like things just start to take on their own pace, maybe. Yeah. And before that, what was it like, Trey? Before that, before that. So I equate it to me in the music business, and um, before having success in the music business, it was kind of like this knocking against the door, it's probably the that we really wants to. And then we have that little spark, that little track, that big thing. Ooh, right, pause. Like pause. Before you do that bit, what is the space before that bit like? Which bit? Before the... The hard work bit. Whatever that is. It's not been hard work, to be honest. It's, um... I don't know. It sounds like... Stubborn persistence. So for you, it would be stubborn persistence. So you're, what, belligerent almost? Like, you just... Just keep going. Mind, if it's a single mind, it's like you, you complete belief in yourself, and you just, it's gonna, you know, you're not waiting for permission. You're not waiting. You just say, you know what? It, it, something will occur, and you just keep going. Yeah, there's like a belief, almost like an arrogance of how it's being done isn't right. You don't know it's the yeah. moment before till it's happened because yeah, you can never replicate. You don't know the yeah, moment yeah. before because it hasn't happened. When you it's happened, that's, oh, that's, 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 that's the bit I'm talking yeah, about. You, you don't know that moment until it's happened because. But you have had it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So so. It's only hindsight that has you see it. Yeah. If you try to give it to this, explain, it, I don't know. Which it's I like joining the dots from the front. You can't join yeah. the dots from the front. But I'm not asking you to join them from the front. Listen to what I'm saying. Before it's happened in the past, mm -hmm. yeah. that space. I want to. I want to dig into that space. So here we are. We're on a mission. We're on a passion. We're we're kind of, we want to, you know, we're out there to make something happen. You've all got an experience of that right now, right? You just said you're waiting for it to tip. But I'm not talking about that. Tell me what it feels like. It feels right. It feels right. It feels to right. me, it, it feels like, right. It's just because there's no resistance in me. It's just like, it's like an empty space of fluidly nice, no resistance. And then it pops. Right, and then it pops. Yeah. And that's been your authentic experience of that, page. I've had it. I've in noticed it in many other ways with, that I've seen that you've been through the last six years. Go on. No, I'm just, I, 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 I'm saying when it's not like that. Because when it's in flow and you're great. Maybe that's what I feel is that, as it's happening. Right. Maybe that's what it feels like as it's happening as opposed to the moment before. The okay. The moment before is horrible. Yeah, well that's the bit I'm asking it's about. Like, so, it's like disgusting, it's horrible, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's like Oh, I pain, it's, it's no anesthetic, it's everything. 
that's the bit. That's the bit I wanted to drill no. drill into. <laughs> okay, so drill, it's everything. She's not listening. She's still no anaesthetics. Drilling. Stop it. No. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost like you're um, it's like cycling up here on the bike, isn't it? Staring at the other horrible side of it is momentum. And I think there's a certain level of complaint in that. The certain level of go on, page, what well, are you when, when it's really good, you think actually the thought of what I had before was worse than actually it was. And when it was really good, when you look back, actually most of the pain I thought I was in, I made it up. <coughs> uh, that's in hindsight, though. Yeah, in hindsight. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, right. Okay. I'm can I can I just say it again for the for the for, for, for just, stick, there, just so. stick in that moment for now. I want to get the complaints and this. So this is a, this is a this is an image I draw for a lot of clients when I work with them. And so there's you, and this process is going to draw out those bits where you're pu pushing against something that you're not gone through yet. All right? So I don't really understand what you're trying to get out with this. Where, where you're point, That's you right. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. So think about something you're very passionate about. You want to achieve, and before any sense of achievement, momentum. There's the the bit you're pushing up against. It's a form of desperation. Ah, right. So in that, there's desperation. You said like drilling. I think the word complaint's wrong. I, yeah, I don't. Because you don't say the complaint about it. From. You don't. Oh, really? Uh, I I know. I'm suspecting. Yeah. I'm suspecting the complaint. Yeah. I'm suspecting the complaint in this situation is why isn't it there yet? I'm not happy this isn't happening yet. That, that sort of complaint. Could be. Uh, it's it could not a negative thing, it's a, cha a positive challenge. Otherwise you just give up. Oh yeah, 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 I've yeah, got it David. In the space of empowered discussion it is, but when you're going through it, think about the things that you've gone through in the last 12 months that haven't had you operate like, oh that's just a complaint, I'm going to get through it, and all empowered. It's like when you're in the thick of it. It, you feel like just about you, it's everything's come, can't, you know, you can't see the big picture, you can't see perspective, you feel a victim, you feel like no one gets it. And that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a form of Yeah. yeah. The context, I mean, if I pray for like, say, a recent poverty project I did, it was literally stressful, like, you feel like you wanted to strangle someone. Right, yeah, did you, yeah. did you, did you? Strangle someone? I ended up, like, getting ill as a result of it, to be fair. But, so, um, so in that, where, where that force yeah. is putting on more on you, there's a certain level of stress yes. and maybe even illness and even the thought of homicide. Uh, at an extreme. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Just, speaking, yes, of course, because we don't. Poor <laughs> <laughs> pigeon or something. <laughs> <laughs> pigeon, that's poor pigeon. Yeah, poor pigeon. No, it's a pigeon. Right, is it, are there two matters in the room, or is there anyone else a bit like that? <laughs> is this what you meant by being all rude? I don't know, yeah. Let's find out who's headed to the What about when we look at the world? I mean, one of the things that Jill, uh, uh, we've identified, when I say Jill, we've identified in the paradigm out there is one of fear, scarcity, and competition. This idea that we're all competing, there isn't enough. We're, we're predicated with fear in our society. Highly, highly tuned to fear. Who here has been recently stopped by a policeman? You thought, oh wow, great, I'm going to get some advice about how I'm driving. <laughs> Did you think that? Not recently, but I've had it happen. Do you know what I mean, though, right? It's not, it's not nice okay, who got a parking ticket recently and they you opened it up? What was that like? Did you go, oh great, they no. put it, I've obviously put the car in. Because he was putting it on, I said, "You know, it's those two hours that you can do." So technically, I was there for two hours forty-five, but he only clocked it at half an hour into it. So I still over. over. I said, oh, "You're only ten minutes over." He said, "But I've given you fifteen minutes." I said, "Too much for you. You've given me half. You don't know about the other half hour because you haven't turned up." So part of me was like, "Well, I sort of deserve it, right?" Because you know, and I couldn't make him wrong because the rules there. Fair cop, um, fair cop. But you did think about trying how you could do it. No, I said, really? I said, can you not? He goes, well, it's gone through. You weren't at that homicide point, though. No, no, no. I was actually saying, you know what? What are you doing? I'm in the wrong. Right? The thing is, right? 
Yeah, and by the time you look at it, it's 25 degrees because it's whatever half. And the, I was actually at a client, potential client meeting, and I've got that client, so I thought, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, like quid pro quo, it all works out. Yeah, so in the big picture. Stick it down expenses and build I was wrong. Well, I did wrong. I, based on the rules, I broke it. So if I went into, oh, you were out of order, get, and get a better job and all the rest of it, well, it's not a question of the point. Technically, he's not done anything out of order. So what else do we go through in life? I mean, I mean, this is all going to come back to collaborating, right? Is when we're collaborating with people, who here can op actually admit at some level, they've attempted collaborations and they didn't work out and they got really pissed off. Put your hand up even a bit more if you've done it a few times. Yeah. Right. So, I want, I want to identify that as part of the fierce scarcity competition effect that we are the effect of. It's societal, it's macro. Um, who here has done a lot of personal development, courses, transformation, in and out of, da da la la la, right? So one of the reasons we designed, I designed the Be Inspired program is my experience of, of, of delivering and going through those programs myself was I'd go and get a transformation, the heavens would open up, everything's possible. Who's had that experience, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? And then, and then the computer says no. And everything goes back into its, like the jack-in-the-box comes out, anything's possible, then boom, there's a lid on it. All right? So my personal experience of personal transformation, and by, by the way, it is vast. I've been at this a long time, not like I'm pulling rank on it, but I've gone through it so many times that I come out with this new hope, the new bulb, the new insight, the new possibility, whatever you want to call it, and there are effects on me that are beyond my personal control, in, in line with what I'm committed to. So if we look at B Collaboration, our commitment is to make a global impact. In a self-organising, explore. I mean, what are we mad? So I noticed how many complaints, upsets, resentments I've had around this project for the last, especially the last six months, I'd say. You know, and I'm thinking, right, going back to what you were sharing, it was exactly where I'm at. How do I reinvent this? How do I reinvent this? What bit is? Because I'm told so much is working. Who here, even in all those things you had going, where you're pushing up against that dread, that worry, that complaint, stress, that was creating all this, there was something still keeping you going? Sometimes it's not about what's necessarily not working, it's about keeping at it, because nothing happens overnight. So persistence over time? Yeah. Yeah, that's logical. But a human being in that experience is not always a logical experience. I'm talking about when it is happening. When you're not empowered. There's a sense of purpose, I think, Pushing forward, I can do it. I've done it before, and then knowing what the victory feels like, because I've done that before, mm. that also has me keep going, even as frustrating. So, getting back to the collaborations, because there's a real element of human investment to make collaboration happen, in my, in, in my experience, is you've got to keep going again, 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 even after the amount of times you've heard that person say the same thing, good or bad. You've got your opinion about them. They've got an opinion about you. The real tricky part, I think, for collaboration is when we get caught up in a spiral of complaint about the other, about the self, about the world. Well, do both, part, do both parties act? Are they coming to the, um, to the table with the same end in mind? Or is it one basically trying to collaborate more, but the other one doesn't actually understand what collaboration is? So this, is, this is an interesting point where I've realised that we are attacking the problem completely wrong. Right? So if you get real, to reconfigure my mind and remove every 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 hurt in my head is an enormous task. So the belief of all of these you can go on a, a person with other conflicts, you're not. You're slightly more aware. The the real thing with collaboration is that you will almost certainly trash someone's value in a permanent. Or undermine them, devalue them. Whatever. Subtle, you use, oh, you use the word complaint, that doesn't relate to me. Right. So complaint doesn't relate, so that's kind of wrong. So we've all got this undiscovered, because we, because that's the way life is, these things were true us. We never knew about it until 
so, you know, and I, I've experienced that a lot recently, where you work with someone's passion, and they said, we want to meet on this day. Well, I don't like meeting on Tuesday. Well, I always do. I like to get this done before lunch. No, that doesn't resonate with my way of thinking. No, I don't, I don't so the reactions are coming up, so, right? So the responses, you, reactions. In that sense, is you start coming across resistance to different ways of working. Because so might be surreal, it might be unconscious, like maybe an unconscious reaction. Diagram, a simple diagram. The elephant is massive. That's everything, every pan, anything we've ever seen, everything we've triggered, we will come on to that pain thing. And at certain moments notice, someone will trigger something for me that I thought I never really was. Right. Brilliant. So I wanna I wanna just I wanna I want to get that this is all part of the fear scarcity paradigm that we, that we talk about in the book, that we talk about very often in B collaboration. So for I would say that is, when I hear the word it's all part of the collaboration, that I have a problem with that straight away. Yeah, don't worry, chill with it, yeah? Right, so fear scarcity conversation is part of the bigger paradigm. So, sorry, chill with what? Just stay with it. You, you just said, told me to chill with it. Yeah, chill with it. <laughs> yeah, no, good, no, good, no, that's no. fine, that's fine as well. So that is what I'm talking about. Right, so partly our reactions and our immediate responses are part of the triggers that push back against the ability to collaborate. That it's there before you are. Your standards, your ideals, what you think people should and shouldn't say. Man, that's like, who wants to be around that? And then we go, oh, let's collaborate, because it's possible. Now, what about if we really explore this love connection abundance? The world of love connection abundance, I think this stuff becomes the gold. That level of authenticity, the ability to really share the experience. Now, you know what? I just found that really offensive that you found that offensive. Interesting, that. I'll park it. Let's find our value. Let's find the value. Let's find the value. What happens to this? Well, it just evaporates, doesn't it? It just yeah. kind of goes, it was a big deal, and suddenly it's like, ping, ping gone. Ping, gone. Because <clears throat> this story, and the investment we've got in holding our opinion, or our position on this stuff, is massive. It's beyond your, I would say, it's beyond your identity. I, I'm, ass I'm asserting, as something to consider, it's almost societal. We would rather be right, or make something wrong, than we would in what's possible. It validates the position of many people. Yeah. It, it validates the position just you say something that you believe is right. Generally. Yeah. What did you say earlier on? Uh, you said, can you tell me more about that? Was it you that said it? Yeah, you said it. Well, can you tell me a bit more about that? Like, I just noticed that that didn't make sense to me. Or I just noticed that that triggered me. Or I just noticed that I just thought, what a load of BS. But hold on. It comes back to what Dave was saying about changing the words of your impossible problem changes, instantly changes the way you look at that problem. Right. Simply by changing the words. Do you think in the societal values of fierce scarcity competition we've been programmed, conditioned, in, in, empowered to collaborate? No, no we haven't. I'm saying we're bumping up against something that's beyond our, just our human personal experience. It's not just personal. It's not like, oh, I should try harder and work longer. Da, da, da. That's personal. I'm saying this is macro. Going back to the years of transformation, my experience has been, you go to have the transformation, you have a breakthrough, you come back out, what's out there? What's out there? People don't let you out in traffic. People don't give way. We're all scuppering for survival. You know, in this model here, this is all about survival. Sometimes it's survival of the story. Because on some level, if you didn't have all this pain and crap to deal with, who would you be? If you really could transcend it. Now I know this is not a comfortable conversation. But I'm asking more of you. I'm asking you to listen beyond just the level of you as an identity having an experience of what I'm sharing. That you, as a sentient being or a sovereign being, part of the species, in love, connection, and abundance, what could be created in the world of collaboration? What would that look like? If I gave up my pettiness and my mate wrong, 
self-judgment. What did you say, Leon? Like pain, like having the drill in my tooth, stress, illness, feeling like killing people, feeling like a victim. Because you're getting something out of that, otherwise it won't be there. Now, I know you know that cognitively. I know you do. Smart cookies in this room. But what if that, did, what about if that got to a point where it just dissipated? And there was flow. You know, smiles, inspired. Not waiting for the result, not waiting for that to come together. But like actually, that's a function, that's my commitment. In the world of collaboration, I want to be known for what things happen around me. I haven't felt like that for a little while, <laughs> personally. I've been doing some of this. Stuck in my complaints and invalidations. Make wrong, myself, them, you. Maybe not you so much. Not these days. It's me. It's not you, it's me. Yeah, you're right. So, I'll, I'm, I'm going to ask you, I'm inviting you to notice what's there in your reactions and be responsible for them. So when collaborations start happening, or they don't happen at the rate, or the pace, or what you've expected, is notice how much of that is self-generated. But how much of that is created by this? And it's not where we look normally. There's something we do a lot more in Be Inspired. We look at the macro. We look at a bank account. We look at what other people are driving. We look at what they're wearing. We look at their lifestyle. It's all going on so fast. And it can make you feel like things aren't happening. Like, you think when the tipping point comes that you'll be happy. No, you won't. It's because you have a whole host of new challenges. That, that's the experience that when you get to the thing, you, you, you get what you aim for and you think, oh, is that it? Or it's not as, actually, there is, there is more. It's not the ju no, the, what I thought the juice was going to taste like. It's not as sweet as I thought because actually I didn't consider that thing or the other the evolution of the next part of the project. Well, think about it. Below the line, you've still got all this stuff. When you get through this line, there's another line. I mean, we've got a hit. You, you've had a hit. I, I don't know too much. Paige just showed me earlier. But then after that, then it's like, do it again. Yeah, or exactly. not. And it's only that hit record becomes a news friend, isn't it? It's like, well, where's the next one? Yeah, where's the next one? I thought. When you get to the top and it's like, well, that's it. it. Yeah. Or well, yeah. Well, that's what one of the things they call uh, paradise syndrome, or, or like bugs in paradise, you know? Get to the top and then what? But if we can create that experience, like, you know, you create and generate that because of who you say you are, separate to this, wow. That's what I think is really in, in, interesting. So, okay, so I think I now understand where, where I don't, don't understand what you're talking about. Because, essentially, all my life objectives have nothing to do with what I've set up there. So I realise that I want a beautiful day every day. So every time someone pisses me off, I reflect and it becomes my impossible problem. But I never share that with anyone because it's my problem to solve. Because I want to come back in and work with that person. But I know that what that person has done, has done what I go to a class or a workshop, he's just exposed some unknown work. That if I'm going to collaborate with that person, I can't walk away it's my personal trigger to unravel. So the more you do that, and the more skillful you do that, you can walk into any collaboration, I can tread on any toes, I can take up bigger collaborations, knowing that as a, a way I engage fully, and then as soon as this stuff happens, then I can withdraw, take responsibility, reconfigure my mind, and come back in, because it's everything to do with my own personal inner peace, and nothing to do with any external projects going on. I would like you to hold that thought. I think I'm done, aren't I? Mm. Yeah, and I'm inviting you to say it's actually totally opposite to that. Just as a perspective. I'm saying a lot of it is macro. You think you're having a personal experience, but actually a huge amount of it is highly, highly uh, conditioned. Our responses, our reactions, we'd like to think they're our own. I'm saying a whole lot of it is created by this fear, scarcity and competition paradigm. For the purpose of this, that you're the effect of something that actually isn't even personal to you. That's, yeah, that's not how I see it. No, I understand. Because as I see it, in terms of the love, connection, and abundance which I want, which is an internal feeling, if something externally has moved me away from that, it's within my control to move me back to that internal state. 
I don't have to follow a macro way. I just have to follow my own personal journey to get back to an internal state. Yeah, and, and that's an interesting thought. I say it's a very self-propelled view. They're not a collective experience. But surely that's a, a, that's a self-propelled view. In, the, in that direction. Yeah, but an individual view. Is that, not, is that a more of a constructive way forward to get there? No, not for the purpose of this talk. I mean, I could give that talk a thousand times. I don't give this one very often. So what are you trying to get out of the way of going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so our experience of human being isn't actually personal to us. There's a huge amount of that being influenced uh, and conditioned by the world around us, not just by our own personal experience. Our money system, our education system, our media, our, our, our government. You don't think that the stuff that's going on with Brexit isn't affecting us at a level? You don't? Wow. Well, it's, uh, I'm only speaking for me. Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. But you may, on the way home, you may go, wow, I didn't even think of that like that. There's a whole load of macro stuff going on that is like gravity around us. That isn't, it isn't pulling for collaboration, it's pulling for competition and fear and isolation. Mm. Go it alone, survival. How are you going to collaborate when you're operating, when that is invisible to you? That's what I'm saying. And it may leave you with something to go away and think about, which is what I had intended. So it's just about creating awareness. Of what yeah, it's only an answer. This is sharing a, an idea that the, the macro stuff in our society is actually working against collaboration. Are you being provocative by any chance? No, I don't think I'm being provocative, but it may be provocative for you. No, I'm not saying okay. yeah. it's very, it's, You're basically saying it's dri driven by divide and conquer, aren't you? Well, yeah, that's one methodology, yeah. There's others, loads. I completely agree. I mean, society is structured so that most people will not really follow their heart and their dreams. And will follow their parents. Yeah, they, yeah, but the society needs that, isn't it? I mean, not everyone's going to be the 1%, so it needs people. I mean, otherwise, what you're doing in schools, a person development wouldn't be taught in schools. I think a lot of stuff you get taught in schools is nonsense. Right. The system isn't I know like history, don't get me wrong, but what has Henry VIII's wife got to do with me and my mortgages and... Well, the music <laughs> yeah, don't start, don't start on musicals. But I would say a lot of what I learn, I would love to, I'd love to have learned about money in school. I'd love to have learned about personal development, like what you're talking about, how to deal with my own um, anger, rather than it be an external thing for someone else to make me happy. I can create it for myself. Rather I than it be who I therapy situation. Yeah, that's, 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 that's we go day to day, you know, normal lives. We wake up, we have breakfast, we do our thing, we weigh my, we've got our goals and values. I get all that, right? And it does work, but if we to sit and think, that the micro stuff doesn't have an impact. Oh, it's diabetes to the extreme. I think Brexit to the extreme. extreme. Yeah. Well, I mean, because that's exactly what they want to think. That's mm -hmm. why you just got people just going along. Well, just, well, let me give you one example. Look how much pop music has changed in the last 30, 40 years, 50 years. I mean, it's, I mean, some of some of these messages you may not be aware of it, but the I notice it because I've got younger children. Who's got younger children? Mm -hmm. And you look at messages in pop. Now, this is just one area. I could pick another 40, 50. Yeah, I completely agree yeah? with that. The conversation and pressure on children to get grades and get into university. Yeah. And, you know, we know as grow more grown-ups that they're coming out of university and they really don't have anything. So do you not think it's possible, then, so I'm getting a gist from you, that you don't think it's possible for an individual to disconnect from that? No, I, I, I'm actually... I'm, I'm, I'm coming up the same... It's possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying that at all. That's I'm saying, I'm saying, that, that, yeah. what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm, so I, and I, and I an interesting challenge, and I connected maybe in some way, probably more than I think, but I've chosen to disconnect, I don't watch the TV much, I, I'm, I always have a mantra, it's either drama or dreams, there's loads of stuff that occupy me 100%, every day. David, Dave, can I interrupt you, this is all about you, I'm not talking about you, personally, you are no, at the effect of the you macro. Said to me, I want you to take something away from me. Yeah. So, so I take it down to me personally. Yes, so but, the, personally but the experience is, is not necessarily no. a personal one. But you are asking me to take something away, and I'm trying to get an understanding of what I need to take away from here. Yeah. So I'm having a dialogue with you about that, and you're saying don't take it personally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Think about it as, what about us as a society, as a community, as a community within B Collaboration? Then how does it look? That's what I'm saying. 
Because we don't think that way. We think about it in our own personal mi micro experience. I'm asking, think about it as a societal effect. See what I'm you. Right, what, I'm alright, Jack. I'm well. I'm aware enough to sort out not to watch that and just engage in that. I'm alright, Jack. So. If the world's alright, I'll just contribute when I can, as opposed to actually, I see it, the more awareness I have, it's my duty now to create something that the world starts to tap, tap into it, as opposed to saying, like, I'm okay. Yeah. And knowing for that to happen, you've got to be so aware of what happens at the macro level. Otherwise, you're like, well, I don't need to know about that, so I'm okay, I'm okay, Jack. Is that awareness? Well, I think, the, I think the big challenge, I think the personal development industries had over the last 30, 40 years, was how to survive this paradigm, not to transform it. And I think that's the thing we've got to confront. That's the thing B Collaboration was set up to do. It wasn't set up to just have a personal development experience. It was about how we're going to impact, our, through our lives and our passion, the very world we live in, through our personal self-expression. That's fine, but with a macro view. Okay, then I'm, I think I'm done. Thank you. A good place to leave it Thank you very much. <laughs>